Daz in the morning. The cat, the tune and the red. Good morning, this is Daz on the cat, the tune and the red this morning. And joining us, we've got an award-winning County Durham filmmaker, Dean Midas. Dean has just released The Devil's Stone on YouTube. Uh, well, he released it on Friday the 13th. And, you know, there's no better date, is there? Please welcome to the show, Dean Midas. Good morning, Dean. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm all right. I'm still recovering from Halloween, as you can imagine. It's a busy day for me. So, uh, but yeah, no, I'm all good. I'm all good. Good. Well, we wanted to have a chat with you in Halloween week, yeah, because you've just released your latest horror short. Tell us a bit about the Devil's Stone. Yeah. So the Devil's Stone is is real. It is in uh, the town centre in Crook in County Durham, and rumour has it and this legend goes that if you run around this stone seven times the devil will appear to you wow. so are, are people brave enough <laughs> <laughs> well that's a great premise for a film isn't it yeah legend well, people lo- seem to love legends and i yeah. think this is why i think this one's captured people's imaginations a little bit so the, the film has a it's quite an earless cast isn't it you've got american actor roger l jackson who was the voice of ghost face in the scream franchise he does a quite a chilling voiceover at the start ellie darson <laughs> yes. uh, alden who plays lily potter in the harry potter and the deathly hallows part two and she was also franny in the doctor who christmas special and you've got dick warlock i mean what a name uh who played michael myers in halloween 2 all to appear in your northeast horror movie how did you get such hollywood royalty in your film you know what even now does i can't quite believe you're reading their names out i can't quite believe they're in my film um roger roger l jackson it is um it's sort of a friendship i struck up many years ago before the scream re- before scream rebooted um right. you know i spoke to him and had some conversations and but you ask the question, never expecting them to say yes to you. You know, I'm a low budget filmmaker, um, and and obviously Ellie was was via a good friend of mine who said, you know, that she might be available. And again, never expected it to happen. I thought, yeah, we get this all the time. We get promised this and that, and then it never happens. But again, they were true to their word. And Ellie has a fantastic scene near the start of the film, which is, you know, she's absolutely amazing actress. Um, and yes, we had a little little cameo at the end from from dick warlock who again i can't quite believe was michael myers in halloween too yeah. so uh you know actually he's actually uh part of a very very famous franchise and he's in one of my films that's absolutely fantastic and and you've made it clear that you, you don't have the doctor who style budget for these guys and and they do it for their love of filmmaking and to support indie directors like yourself that's got to be really heartwarming it's amazing it opens a lot of doors this and it has opened a lot of doors for us this film um i'm open and honest you know this whole budget for this whole film was around 200 pound and most of that was on say hicks's mask uh so it's we haven't got yet so you know we are real shoestring budget filmmakers um and up until halloween night i think i looked late last night and we were up to around about nearly twenty one thousand views which is quite mind-blowing really wow, that's that is brilliant yeah uh dean you, you've made other horror films as well uh your characters rag dolly and evie valentine um what do you think's been your best film yet, or, or or are they like your children and you can't pick a favourite? <laughs> well, before Say X came, along, the question that people used to like to get me on the spot with, "Who's your favourite, Dolly or Eve?" and I was like, "Oh no, no, I can't do that." They're like my favourite, like my two spooky children. Um, but yeah, it's. I mean, this has blown, you know, our figures away in terms of for, for the short space of time that it's been out. Um, and we have had a lot of positive reviews from it. But as I've said to everyone, I'm, I, you know, I'm very proud of the Even Dolly franchise. And, and without them, I probably wouldn't be where we are today. So I'm very proud of what, what went before. But I do think this has set a bit of a, of a, bit of a precedent now. And, and any future film that we make is going to be watched very closely. So, you know, it does put the pressure on a little bit. We're chatting with Dean Midas, award-winning County Durham filmmaker. And we'll chat a little bit more about his career and what's next right after this. <laughs> This is Daz on the cat, the tune and the red and we're joined by a very special guest uh, filmmaker Dean Midas who's just released uh, The Devil's Stone, his latest horror short Uh, Dean, you mentioned that uh, there's been a brilliant feedback so far to, to, to the film in fact one top TV producer said 
Dean Midas, I'm sorry to embarrass you here, uh, said Dean Midas has done it again. <laughs> the Devil's Stone is an excellent short horror film that is sure to stay with you long after you watch it. It's a well-made film with strong performances, a great sense of atmosphere, and a simple but effective concept. If you're a fan of horror, I highly recommend it, checking it out. Uh, you've also become runner-up in an American film festival. How important is this recognition to you, Dean? It's massive for all the hard work that we put in, like I say, on, on a shoestring budget. You know, a lot of these people give their time to me for free as well. You know, they're at work all day and then they'll come and film for four or five hours for, for you know, for maybe and ex some expenses just, to, you know, for petrol and stuff. And that's exactly all they do. So to... to I mean, the festival was crazy because we literally got nominated for this and it's, the film had only been out 11 days at the time and then I'm wow. getting messages to say we were runners-up and it's like, this is... I'm sure someone somewhere is winding me up with, with all of this stuff, to be <laughs> yeah. honest with you. Um, but, yeah, I mean, uh, the, the Jay that reviewed it... Um, I know Jay from my time. He works on things like Britain's Got Talent and used to be on The X Factor and stuff. And Jay... Let's, I will be honest, Jay won't mind me saying this, he is the kind of person that if that film was rubbish, he would tell me it was rubbish. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. so, Brutal. Brutal is the word. He, he would be, does, and he wouldn't lie. He wouldn't go, oh, yeah, Dean, it's a great film, and then look at his mates and go, oh, it's terrible. Yeah. He would actually say it. And, and so for him to give me that recognition, you know, I'm, I'm really proud. Brilliant. Now, you shoot your films on mobile phones, don't you? Using local locations, uh, local actors, local crew, and obviously this has gained you international recognition as well. Uh, you've won North East Filmmaker of the Year and BBC Uploads Film Master. How do you find shooting movies this way? And, and do you think it encourages young filmmakers to have a go as well? You know, it does. I really hope it does because we've all got mobile phones and most yeah. top-end mobile phones these days, the video quality are 4K. You know, most of mine's 4K or, eight, or HD. Yeah. So, you know, you, you can't tell the difference between some of these films than, than if you were recording some with some DSLRs and stuff. But it's, it's easier for me. I've got my phone rigs and lighting and stuff that goes onto it. So it's easy for me to shoot and film. And I can also shoot film and edit as well. I can literally pull myself away, look at it, edit it, show the actors there and then and go, are you happy with this? Um, and, and we can move on very quickly rather than I have to go and sit in a room for three days and pull it all together and edit and then send it to them. And an actor says, oh, no, I don't like it. And then we have to go back to the venue and, and stuff. But, yeah, I mean, the venues as well, I have to have to um, give them a mention um, because the Witham in Barnard Castle mm -hmm. is an art centre that's open uh, seven days a week. And for six hours, one summer's day, we literally took over their whole venue um, again, for completely, you know, for nothing for free. Um, and they let us just take over there. You know, there was a cafe open, there was stuff going on. And we literally, when you watch the film, you'd never guess the place was open because, yeah. you know, there's no one else around. So we were quite clever how we filmed it. But yeah, again, you know, these venues, again, it, you, you can't, you can't thank people enough for this kind of support to say, oh, come and film here for free. Because again, like, you know, like Dick and, and Roger and stuff, given their time, they can see what we're, we're trying to do. Yeah, and and this this way of shooting, you know, using a mobile phone, instant editing, getting those those rushes in straight away. Would you like to do a, a full feature length movie in that way? Is that is that something you're thinking about next? Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest with you. One of my um, all time favorite films is the Blair Witch Project. I think it was yeah. a fa fantastic film in in '99 when it came out. It blew everyone away with how how it was made, and obviously, I know that was more camcorders, but you can get the same effect if mm. everyone had if you had a group of mobile phones and investigators. I would love to do a Blair Witch, you know, style film which runs for 90 minutes and get it in the cinema because that would be, you know, get that, you know, for one Halloween to get my film into the cinema and everyone watching it would be would be a bit weird, but it would also be, you know, a massive achievement. Now, you specialise in horror movies. Uh, have you always been a horror nut? Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> in fact, my poor parents when they were growing up, I used to pull my, my poor mother up to, like, watch Nightmare on Elm Street and stuff like that, and, you know, she hated every minute of it, but um, she supported what I, what I did, and, and you know, my, my dad wasn't a big fan of it all. Um, but, yeah, they, you know, they, they, let me, they let me sort of, watch them and, and and do it and as i've obviously grown up and, and been able to to do it myself um it's always been a, a huge goal of mine to make a, my own films so you know i look back now and i think this is about the ninth film that we've made over the past sort of 10 years or so and uh it's just something really fantastic to look back on and, and like you said earlier on i really hope it, it makes the young filmmakers look at what we're doing the attention that we're getting and go do you know what 
I can do this and I'm going to give this a try myself. I absolutely love that as well. I, I, you know, I, I really think it will. Um, Dean, a lot of people have been watching horror movies this week during Halloween week. We, we had our Halloween Name That Theme special um, on Tuesday where we played uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, which, which I think freaked so many of us out playing that music again. Um, do you have a, a horror favourite, would you say, Dean? Yeah, Scream is is a huge influence on me. Um, I think obviously everyone everyone agrees that Scream in 1997 rejuvenated the horror genre when it was yeah. excuse the pun but dead. Um, yeah. And uh, and obviously my it, we've all we've always got to visit Halloween around this time of year because yeah. that was an iconic you know an iconic slasher film. And I think most horror fans will always mention Halloween or The Exorcist as part of their uh, top films. And what do you think it is that makes us want to watch these films? You know, that makes us want to be scared and, and anxious and, and frightened. Um, I don't know. I think it's just obviously certain people, because like you say, I've got friends that will never watch them. They just say, look, Dean, I've never watched a horror film. I never will. They don't like it. Where I think some of us, I think it's like roller coasters. There's a lot of people that like going on roller coasters. It's a bit of an adrenaline thing. And I think that's what you get. You get that fear of, of you know, you know something's going to happen and, you, you, you know, you get scared, but you also know that, you know, it's not real, it's on the big screen, and, and then once it's done, you can just walk away from it. But, yeah, I think it's like an adrenaline thing, really, that, that horror buffs just get a buzz from it. So what's next for you, Dean? What, what have you got in the pipeline? A, a comedy, a children's film, perhaps, you know? <laughs> Love story. Um <laughs> You know, Cinderella, something like that. Um, I think, I think what my, my my wife will tell you if you if she was here now, she would say you're having a couple of weeks rest and and, and get away from it. Obviously, now Halloween's gone. She'll say, look, just chill out for a few weeks, yeah. um, and then, yeah, I think by towards the end of the year, early January, I'll be already planning my next um, film, which will 99.9 percent be uh, the Devil Stone Two. So um, right. I will be doing a sequel to it. Fabulous. And and just one last thing, Dean. How can people get to see your movies? So if you search Dean Midas Films on YouTube, and all of my short films are on there, including the new Devil Stone. Brilliant, Dean. We're, we're so pleased to have you on this morning. Please come back and tell us uh, when the the new one's coming out next year. Hopefully, uh, it's it's fabulous that we've we've got a, another fantastic northeasterner uh, doing so well out there, and and you know with the awards with with getting your film out there we're really proud to have you on the show uh, and if you want to see Dean's films like you said it's on his YouTube channels uh, and and check out The Devil Stone it really is really is a piece of work Dean thank you so much it's been a pleasure talking to you and good luck with whatever you do next thank you very much I really appreciate it thank you Daz in the morning the, the tune